Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is pneumatic directional control valves. Our objective is to examine pneumatic directional control valves and discuss their function in pneumatic systems. Additionally, we'll examine port numbering schemes common in the pneumatics industry. This lecture operates under the presumption that the viewer has a prior level of familiarity with hydraulic directional control valves as illustrated in the Hydraulic Directional Control Valves Lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, only didn't recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Operating from this base of prior experience, this lecture will be a brief review of the aforementioned topics and largely will restrict itself to discussing properties unique to pneumatic valves. Since the pneumatic directional control valve family is so numerous, I thought it'd be wise to first examine them independently rather than including them in a larger lecture on pneumatic schematic symbols. As with any lecture, the content herein depicts standards adopted by a majority of modern manufacturers, but not all. A thick, tangled jungle of peculiarities exist, especially for older valves and valves manufactured by shoddy companies in backwards countries. Canada, I'm looking at you. Always consult the data sheet for the directional control valve of interest. As you're no doubt aware, a valve is a fluid power component designed to modify pressure, flow rate, or flow direction. A subset of these valves, those that modify flow direction, are appropriately called directional control valves. The purpose of a directional control valve is to stop, start, and change direction of flow in a fluid power circuit. Flow direction ultimately influences the actuation direction of a fluid power actuator. Directional control valve position influences whether pneumatic cylinders extend, retract, or stay put, as well as the rotational direction of pneumatic motors. Three properties define directional control valves, ports, positions, and actuation method. A port is a defined connection point. A position is one defined function of a valve characterized by a particular flow path. Lastly, the actuation method is how a valve is moved from one position to another. Astute observers will note that I have not made use of the nonsense term way, principally because the term way might mean ports in one industry or synonymous with the term position in another. It is for this reason I have declared the term way officially dead. In lieu of condolences, the Way family has requested you send a large monetary donation to the author of the Big Bad Tech channel. Consider this two by two or two port, two position, solenoid actuated, spring offset directional control valve. Ports are the entry and exit points to a valve. Since this schematic symbol has two paths leading to or from it, this directional control valve has two ports. We'll return to port labeling conventions unique to pneumatics in a moment, but for now, let's just call them one and two. In the position on the right, passage from 1 to 2 is closed, as indicated by the block T's. The spring on the right-hand side ensures the directional control valve is offset into this closed position in the deactivated state. For this reason, one might also refer to this directional control valve as a 2x2, two two, solenoid-operated, normally closed directional control valve. Normally closed is sometimes abbreviated NC. In contrast, the position on the left will allow passage from port 1 to 2 as indicated by the arrow pointing from 1 to 2 in the position box. Single-headed arrows in a position box means flow is intended to be unidirectional, whereas double-headed arrows mean flow can be bidirectional. To move the valve into the activated left-hand position necessitates the valve be actuated by some outside source, as identified by the solenoid operator on the left-hand side. Energizing the solenoid moves the actuated directional control valve to the activated open position, allowing passage from one to two. When the solenoid is de-energized, the spring offset on the right-hand side will return the directional control valve to the deactivated closed state, blocking passage from one to two. The internal construction of pneumatic directional control valves is startlingly similar to that of hydraulic directional control valves, whereby moving internal components like poppets, sliding plates, or spools selectively connect or disconnect ports via the internal passageways machined into the valve body. A simplified internal diagram of a 2x2 two two normally closed directional control valve might look something like this. In the deactivated state, the spring offset on the right-hand side positions the sliding spool such that a land or a high point on the spool blocks passage from 1 to 2. Whereas in the activated state, the energized solenoid on the left-hand side pushes the sliding spool such that a valley or a low point on the spool allows passage from one to two. When the solenoid is de-energized, the spring offset returns the spool such that the land again blocks passage from one to two. Let's build upon and modify this valve. Consider the following subtle modification you might find in a pneumatic system. 
Rather than using a wound coil of wire as a return spring, one might also encounter air springs, whereby a directional control valve makes use of pressurized air on the side of the spool to assert the deactivated closed state. As with a coil spring, in the absence of an electrical signal to the solenoid, the air spring pushes the valve into the deactivated closed state. Energizing the solenoid overcomes the air spring, and the actuated valve moves to the activated open position, allowing passage from 1 to 2. When the solenoid is de-energized, the air spring again returns the valve to the deactivated closed state, blocking passage from 1 to 2. You'll note the only way of shifting this solenoid operated valve as presently illustrated to the activated open position is via an electrical signal. Oftentimes the technician needs to force a valve into a desired position for troubleshooting or emergency purposes or in the event of loss of electrical function. For this reason, manufacturers often include an accessory manual actuator as a means of overriding the electrical solenoid. Appropriately enough, these are called manual overrides and are schematically symbolized as a top hat next to a solenoid. Even if the control circuit is depowered and no electrical signal reaches the solenoid, an operator can still physically push the directional control valve into the activated position. Manual overrides often take the form of a push or a pull operator or even small screws that can force a particular valve into a desired position and lock it in place. A manual override is essentially a means of offering a technician a means of shifting a directional control valve to some desired position should the solenoid or control system fail to do so. Starting with the previously discussed two by two, or two port two position, solenoid actuated normally closed directional control valve, including a manual override and air spring offset. Consider the significant consequences of this subtle but very important change. Notice anything different? This new valve is still a two by two or two port two position directional control valve that's solenoid actuated with a manual override and an air spring offset. Only this version's deactivated state opens the passage from one to two. When energized, the solenoid slides the spool such that it closes passage from 1 to 2 in the activated state. For this reason, this particular valve on the right might be referred to as a normally open 2x2 two two solenoid actuated valve. Normally open is sometimes abbreviated as NO. I must emphasize that these are two entirely different directional control valves with fundamental behavior differences between them. The directional control valve on the left is normally closed and in the deactivated state blocks passage from one to two. Whereas the directional control valve on the right is normally open and in the deactivated state allows passage from one to two. When the solenoids are energized by an electrical signal, these directional control valves change states. The directional control valve on the left opens the passage from one to two in the activated state. Whereas the directional control valve on the right closes passage from one to two in the activated state. I don't mean to be overly dramatic, but misinterpreting a schematic symbol can have life-threatening consequences, like turning on the flow of poisonous gases like tungsten hexafluoride when you mean to turn it off, or turning off oxygen supply to a spaceship when you mean to turn it on. Don't make these easily avoidable mistakes, and be sure you know what the deactivated and activated states of a directional control valve imply to a larger pneumatic system. While we're on the top of actuators, a veritable freak show of different style actuators exist, including, but not limited to, manual actuators like push buttons, pull buttons, levers, knobs, and foot pedals, mechanical operators like bidirectional and unidirectional rollers, springs and air springs, pneumatic pilots, and various types of electrical solenoids. All manual operators necessitate an operator use their hand, foot, or some other sufficiently robust portion of their anatomy to push, pull, flip, twist, or otherwise diddle or dork with some operator intended for human use. Mechanical actuators, in contrast, are intended to strike some tag or some limit device in an automatic system without human intervention. Valves can also use pilot air pressure signals from somewhere else in a pneumatic system to shift a directional control valve spool to a desired position. Depending upon manufacturer and country of origin, I've seen air pilot actuators schematically illustrated as a dashed line leading to a box with an empty arrow, a dashed line leading to an empty arrow without the box, or just a dashed line without an arrow or a box. We'll examine air pilot pneumatic directional control valves and applications in greater detail in later lectures. Lastly, solenoids might be illustrated as simple on-off style solenoids as in our previous examples, or as variable solenoids as part of a more sophisticated proportional valve. Without getting too detailed, a simple on-off style solenoid, as the name implies, operates digitally 
and does or does not fully shift a valve into another position depending on the presence or absence of a full voltage signal. In contrast, a variable solenoid operates using a continuously variant analog signal where application of full voltage still fully shifts the valve as previously. However, application of half voltage half shifts the valve. In this manner, a variable solenoid as part of a proportional valve with a specially designed spool not only operates as a directional control valve stopping, starting, and changing the direction of fluid flow, but also as a flow control valve by ramping up or throttling down flow rate, thus controlling not only actuator direction, but also actuator speed. We'll examine proportional valves in much, much later lectures. Lastly, I should mention combination of these types of actuators exist. For example, consider a solenoid actuated valve that rather than directly shifting the spool electrically as in our previous examples, instead, the electrical portion opens up a small air pilot passage and pilot air does the actual hard work of shifting the spool. As one might expect, these types of indirectly acting solenoids might be illustrated as a combination of a solenoid and air pilot symbol. Before we move on, let's discuss the consequences of directional control valves without springs, coils, or air. You'll recall these accessory devices offset two position directional control valves into some desired deactivated state. Directional control valves with offset springs are sometimes called monostable, meaning there is a preferred deactivated state the directional control valve returns to when it isn't being actuated. In this example, this monostable 2x2 two two directional control valve has a preferred normally closed deactivated state and only opens at the direction of a lever. Once the valve isn't being actuated, the spring offset valve immediately returns the valve to the deactivated closed state. This isn't always necessary or desired. You might find certain directional control valves making use of actuators with detents or pairs of actuators operating in opposition to one another. For example, consider a 2x2 two two directional control valve lacking an offset spring employing a manual operator with a detent illustrated as a triangular cutout. Alternatively, a detented actuator might be illustrated as a regular actuator on one side with a detent on the other. When an operator twists a detented knob, pushes a detented button, or pulls a detented lever, the directional control valve moves into the opposite position and then just stays there until an operator makes the conscious decision to twist, pull, or push the detented actuator in the opposite direction and the directional control valve moves back and stays there. There's no need for a return spring because these types of directional control valves maintain the last asserted state. In contrast to valves with a preferred deactivated state, these types of valves might be called bistable valves, i.e. valves with two stable states. The classic example of these types of bistable directional control valves is a very simple inline shutoff valve or a shutoff valve on a compressor. Turn the lever one way and flow is blocked. Turn the lever the other and flow is allowed to pass. Open it and it stays open, close it and it stays closed. Depending upon your country of origin, you might find simple shutoff valves like this schematically illustrated as a pair of opposing triangles. Bistable directional control valves can also make use of paired actuators operating in opposition to one another. Consider a 2x2 two two double air piloted valve. Look, no spring. When a signal is sent to the air pilot on the left, the directional control valve moves into the open position on the left and allows flow from 1 to 2. In contrast, when a signal is sent to the air pilot on the right, the valve moves into the closed position on the right and blocks flow from 1 to 2. The air pilots essentially push the valve into a desired state and it stays there till the opposite pilot asserts itself and moves it back. Inquisitive viewers might ask, what's the deactivated state for this type of valve? Come to think of it, what's the activated state? Is there one? Also, what happens if both pilots receive a signal? Dear viewer, I'd love to answer these legit quandaries about memory, priority, and more, but seeing time is of the essence, you'll just have to wait till I publish an upcoming lecture on air piloted valves. Anticipation, as they say, conspicuous pause, is part of showmanship. Let's now examine three by two directional control valves, where the first number three is the number of ports, one, two, three, and the second number two is the number of positions, i.e. the deactivated and activated state. Consider a normally closed three by two push button operated directional control valve. In the deactivated state, the spring offset places the spool in the closed position, such that flow from port 1 to 2 is blocked. However, port 2 is dumped to an exhaust port on 3, schematically represented as an empty arrow 
putting away into the external environment. Exhaust ports are often located in the bottom of the valve body at the point of use. You may or may not see a muffler or a silencer on the exhaust port schematically illustrated as this maze-like zigzag passage designed to minimize the sound of escaping air. When an operator pushes the push button, the spool would be moved to into open position such that flow passes from one to two and three is blocked. When an operator releases the push button, the valve returns to the spring offset closed state, blocking one to two and dumping two to three. 